Before you spend months studying for certifications, before you quit your job, before you tell everyone you're going to become a network engineer, you want to hear this because there are things about this career that nobody tells you until you're actually in it. And look, I'm not here to scare anyone, but I love this field. But I've seen way too many people get into networking for the wrong reasons, burnout in two years, and then they blame the industry. The reality is this career isn't for everyone, and that's okay but you deserve to know exactly what you're signing up for. So let me give you five things I wish someone had told me before I became a network engineer. So one of the harsh truths about becoming a network engineer is that you're always going to be blamed for the network issue or any sort of outage that happens in your network. And it is unfortunate, but we are blamed. And to be fair, we are sort of the people in between or the middlemen that can cause an outage so that we are de facto going to be the blamed person if there is ever an outage, which does suck whenever you are, you know, on call or whatever, you have to fix an issue, but it does happen and you're going to have to deal with it. But the good thing about the network is the network doesn't lie. We show our evidence, we show that it's not a network issue and then we push it down to the system team or the video team or whoever team is complaining about the particular issue, we can push it down to the software team, cloud team, whatever. But as a network engineer, our duty is to show our evidence and protect the network to make sure it's always active. Because as a network engineer, our goal is to make sure you're able to watch this YouTube video from wherever you are in the world, because I have viewers from India, Africa, China, the United States, Mexico, South America, whatever. And for the network to work, there's a bunch of wires all over the world that are interconnected that connect all of us together at some point, which is absolutely phenomenal. But there's a lot of room for error, a lot of mistakes to be made. And as a network engineer, we are always blamed. It does happen. It does suck. And it, it is unfortunate sometimes to be blamed. And you have to like be the person to like show like, hey, this is not me. I, like I get on bridge calls all the time all the time, which are basically video calls where you get on a call with other teams and they're saying, hey, we have an outage, let's fix this issue. And you're trying to fix the issue and you're like, hey, I'm my side looks good. And you don't <laughs> you don't understand how many times I've said my side looks good. And then they're saying, wait, how? Or like, no, it's not or something. But you have to just show your evidence and you, you know, share your screen and you're like, okay, his side does look good. So you're, you're pretty much good to go at that point. So that's definitely going to be one of the bigger issues is that you're always blank. Another thing about network engineering is this is not a field where you have to memorize everything. A lot of times people think this is a field I have to memorize the OSI model, I have to memorize this, I have to memorize that. This field of networking requires a lot of critical thinking because here's the thing, you're gonna have to troubleshoot an issue and you can't just go through a book and follow steps to, to troubleshoot this issue or like look at the OSI model and you have to use your critical thinking skills. If the port is down, is it administratively down? Is it down because of speed? Is it down because of duplex setting? Is it down because of a, you know, for whatever reason? You have to identify the reason why the port is down. And once it's, once it's finally up, why can't we still communicate? Okay, is it because there's a firewall in between that's blocking the packet? Is it because of ACL? Is it because of port security? Is it because of whatever? Is it because of the MAC address? It could be because of multiple different reasons and you have to identify what the exact reason is. And that is going to require some critical thinking skills because you never know. It could be because of the AAA server that's blocking that from, for the user to get in. You never know, right? So you have to identify that. And the CCNA does kind of prep you to learn those skills on how to critical thing. But actually as a network engineer, my critical thinking skills have gone be gotten better right tremendously just by you know look, doing this on the job so a lot of times if you guys want to become network engineers this is something that you guys have to know is you're gonna to have to think sometimes think outside the box to fix an issue I remember one time i was trying to fix a particular issue and i, I didn't know what it was until i realized it was because of vrrp there's a vrrp issue on the, on, on the network and i had to change some of the configurations to change the virtual ip to make it work i got it to work but that required some critical thinking skills to understand okay this is what the issue is identify it troubleshoot it multiple times and get it to work. But that's kind of one of the biggest things about networking is, is having those skills that are going to be mission critical for you guys. Another thing is you're going to be on call eventually. So on call basically means you have your phone. I have two, basically two work phones. You know, you have a phone with you and your phone's going to get buzzed at some point during the day, night, morning, whatever. And when your phone gets buzzed, you have to answer the phone, whether it's two in the morning, one in the morning, five in the morning or 2 p.m. during your lunch break. It doesn't really matter. Your phone is going to get buzzed. And when it gets buzzed, it's basically saying, hey, there's a critical outage or some sort of alert that usually the NOC team sends, which is the Network Operations Control Center, they'll send that alert to the network engineer saying, hey, we need to fix this particular issue. So we'll go ahead, see what the alert is, call them, see what's going on. And we go, we go back on our laptop, we, you know, we, we see what's going on, we'll see what, what needs to be fixed. Sometimes you have to hop on a bridge call, like a video call with other people who are, you know, depending on how big the outage is, if it's a massive outage, maybe a lot of people are going to be awake and, and maybe gotten pinged for it. And the reason you're on call is because we are, you know, the bottleneck for that outage and we need someone ready to fix it. Imagine you're trying to watch Netflix two in the morning and you're not able to connect to your Netflix account because of the network issue. They're not just going to wait till seven in the morning for someone to wake up to do, fix it. They're going to call you to fix it because there's customer impacting and, and there's a lot of money at stake. Netflix, Netflix could lose millions to billions of dollars if it's 
no, no, if the Netflix just stops working. So that's kind of why we have network engineers on standby to kind of fix issues. And going into the next thing I wanna talk about real quick is yes, we are on standby. As a network engineer, there are also times where it can just be a bit boring as a network engineer. Sometimes you're running the same configurations. Sometimes you're just waiting for something to happen. I remember sometimes like I'm doing a uh, maintenance window change, which is basically a change on the network where, you know, I do my configurations and I have another team that, and they're doing their configurations, right? And what's going on is they, it takes them maybe three hours to do their configurations. And I finish my configurations like quickly in like 30 minutes. So I'm out here just waiting, sitting, trying to figure out like what to do. Should I like watch a TV show? Should I do something like, what am I supposed to do? Like there's, if I'm waiting three hours for someone to do work, sometimes it's just boring. Sometimes I just go on walks around the office or go on a coffee break, uh, talk to some people. There's really not much to do sometimes as a network engineer where what they call like downtime. And downtime can be good because then a lot of people, you know, they, they use that time to study. In fact, I use that downtime to actually take my CISSP exam. So I, I ended up having so much downtime to, you know, take that exam and, and study while I was at work. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, what, you're, are you allowed to study at work? Like, of course you are. A manager should kind of see you if, you know, that's better than being on your phone, better than being on TikTok if you guys use TikTok, whatever. But I would definitely say it's very important to understand that you, there are gonna be times where you're literally doing nothing and that's normal. Another thing I wanna talk about is the pressure that you can be in. So there is a lot of pressure when it comes to becoming a network engineer. Obviously we talked about the outages. Obviously we talked about like, we are the direct line communication of the network. That comes with a lot of pressure. Sometimes you have to get a work done quickly. I remember I, I woke up in the morning, I woke up at like, you know, 6 a.m. And I get a text saying, hey, is this done? Is this work done? And I was like, oh, it's not done. So I was like, I rushed to my computer, had to quickly rip up a configuration and quickly, uh, and then quickly get it, get it approved by one of my team members. And then sometimes that takes a lot of time because a lot of bureaucracy, because you have to send it to your manager, you have to send it to your director. It takes a lot of time for, before you can add that configuration. You can't just like add a configuration onto network. And that's something I want to talk about as well is that when it comes to doing your work as a network engineer, Sometimes it takes time. You can't just like go into, you know how you guys go into Packet Tracer and Azure Configs? You can't really do that as a network engineer. You have to get your configurations approved and stamped by multiple individuals who've gotten their eyes on it before you can ever implement it on the network. And it's very, it's, and it's done that way for a very smart reason. The reason we're doing that is because we wanna make sure we keep the integrity of the network, which is making sure there's no wrong configurations and no out of standard configurations, which is a whole nother thing. So that's one big thing that I'm gonna say is, 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 is a big annoyance. Another thing about networking is the learning never stops. The network is always changing. We're always implementing new top topologies, new networks, whatever we need to do is not going to stay the same. Obviously, we're, we're moving to faster speeds on the internet. We're using different devices. For example, when I first started as a network engineer, I only knew Cisco. I never knew any other vendor. I had to learn Juniper on the job, right? And that was something I had to actively learn. I know a lot of people, they, they get into a field like the medical field or nursing. They don't actually have to learn on the job. They've gotten the skills. They're already done. No more learning, right? But as a network engineer, you constantly have to keep learning, get better and better and better, which is totally fine because learning, you know, it, it, it keeps you motivated, it keeps you fresh. And that's one of the best things about networking. Another thing about, about networking, what I notice is you become extremely valuable. And what I mean by valuable is it's hard to really lay off a network engineer, right? As opposed to like people in cybersecurity or people in software engineering, those particular fields, you know, it's, it's, if it's product-based or cost-based, it, it can be an issue, but networking, you kind of have to need a network engineer because if the network goes down, it's a bad look, right? And uh, that's one of the cool things about networking is, is that, you know, we, you are a big piece of the pie as to why the company is actually functioning. We're making sure where the company's actually working at the end of the day. So that's definitely one big thing about network engineering that I recommend people to get into if you're interested is that there's a high level job security from what I noticed. Lots of people who become network engineers, like to this day, I get recruiters reaching out to me every single day for positions. And that's because network engineers are extremely valuable in today's market. So those are the things that you guys should know before you become a network engineer. Hopefully this has been insightful for you guys and you learn a lot of information from this. Look, if you watch this whole video and you're still excited about network engineering, that's absolutely amazing. That's actually a great sign. It means you're going in with your eyes open and that's exactly what you need. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, okay, I'm in, but I still don't know how exactly to get started and land my job. That's exactly how I help people inside of my mentorship program. It's designed to take you from stuck to landing a job as a network engineer. It's not for everyone, but if you want a clear path and someone to guide you through it, check the link in my description. But I want to say thank you guys so much for taking the time to tune into my channel. It really means a lot. If you guys need help with anything else, feel free to leave a qu uh, question in the comment section below. If you guys um, want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe. But thank you guys so much for tuning in and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Peace.